Hello guys, welcome to another FIFA 23 Tactics video here on the channel. I'm Bromat18 and today we are going to talk about Simone Inzaghi's Inter Milan system tactics. Uh, for you we've got the 3-5-2 today which is of course synonymous with Inter Milan. Not only over Inzaghi's reign but also Antonio Conti's as well. And it's one that I'm really looking forward to getting into as we kind of round off the current tactics before we get into these classic systems. For those of you new to the channel, welcome along. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload for you today. We're going to go through the formation, the 352, the position changes. We're going to talk about the custom tactics and also the play instructions that you need to know. We've also got an attacking game plan for you as well. Uh, so we'll go through that at the end before... I do go through this. I just want to quickly say, if you want to see how this tactic ranks and rates compared to all of the other systems that I do cover on the channel, make sure to check out my Patreon down below. The link will be in the description. On there, you can get access to my FIFA 23 custom tactics package with rankings and ratings, strengths and weaknesses, suitable teams to players for every team we cover on the channel. You can also get access to exclusive tactics videos. Got the likes of uh, what well, we've got Bayer Leverkusen of Chabi Alonso. We've got Michael Carrick's Middlesbrough on there. We've got Real Sociedad on there. We've got a whole host of different tactics that you'll like, as well as Discord server access, fancy football access, early access to videos, and a whole lot more. With that being said, let's talk about this system. So, first things first, what do we have with the formation? Well, we've got this 3 5 2, but on P3, it's known as a 3 1 4 2. You want to make sure that you've got these wide midfielders rather than wing backs because these guys will get further forward you also get greater control over their instructions as well so you can kind of dictate their positioning etc and their runs into the box which is very very important uh, with regard to some of the personnel uh, just worth bearing in mind obviously as of recording this Brozovic has been injured but you know when he's fully fit you do expect him to be in the team we've also mixed around the likes of De Vrij because obviously a Cherby plays there sometimes but you know the, the roles and instructions do pretty much stay the same uh, with regards to the positions just make sure that these guys are also right and left central midfield as well we don't know for sure whether or not it does set that at the base so just make sure that worth kind of ensuring that is the case as well with the custom tactics then for the team itself defensive style is pressure on heavy touch you'll notice them pushing up as a unit when the team the opposition kind of mess about with it at the back recently they did score a goal against monzo martinez which was coming from just that so they like to press up as a block really in certain moments there is an element of counter pressing but not all the time and that's why we've opted for pressure on heavy touch here. The width is on 30. The lowest you can have it, of course, before it becomes narrow. Helps to really complement the fact that you've got three centre-backs and three central midfielders as well. And then the depth is on 60. Giving you a mid-block, but on the higher end of that mid-block. Something I noticed very much. I kind of assumed originally that they would play that high line i've obviously watched plenty of games of them before studying for this one and felt that was the case but in kind of analyzing it a little bit deeper notice that they're really more of a mid-block team particularly uh, when they are playing the likes of the, of the bigger sides as well so that's something that you just want to note down offensively the builder plays on slow build up and then the chance creation is possession you'll notice they're very patient in probing for that opening you will find a little bit of stagnation at times which you will see in the gameplay that will be below me um, but it's all about kind of patiently probing for that opening as well. The width is on 80, stretching the pitch out a whole lot. A lot of their kind of passages of play come from the wide areas. They get crosses into the box at a high volume and a high rate. Uh, they also like to kind of stretch the central midfielders out as well, and this does help with that. The likes of Barella uh, and Mikatarin in this case are going to be kind of further wide and that's what we're looking for they do like to kind of do some work in those half channels players in the box is on to seven giving you a fair few players in the box that, again something that plays into the fact that they they have a high volume of crossing as part of their kind of attacking patterns and kind of style of play um, and you'll notice that it's not just the strikers the wing backs get into the box some of the central midfielders do as well and even center backs can get forward which we will talk about a little bit later on Finally, with the set pieces, corners and free kicks, both of these are on four. So let's talk about the player instructions. Starting off with Anana in goal, who is one of the most kind of aggressive sweeper keepers you're really ever going to see. 
You'll often find that he'll kind of come out and play as another centre-back at times in possession. He really likes to take risks. Starting position will be very, very high. And so with that in mind, his uh, instructions are comes crosses and also sweeper keeper with the centre-backs. Now, De Vrij or Acherby, whoever it may be, in the middle is absolutely fine. With the two wide centre-backs, though, you want to set both of these guys to overlap. You'll mm. notice when watching Inter Milan play, the wide centre-backs very very uh, key part of kind of their attacks they like to progress the ball forward they like their starting positions to be high they will get forward they will put crosses into the box really really good the fact that they're losing Skriniar at the end of the season to PSG is going to hurt them a lot it will be, they'll be fun. It really really tough to replace him thankfully Bastoni for now is staying and he's a huge part of that style as well so you'll notice that these guys will kind of trudge on forward a little bit more with the two wing backs, both of these guys are on the same instructions. We've got DeMarco here. I played with Gossens in the gameplay down below. They're on comeback on defense to make sure they're tracking back. The game does a really good job of identifying that you don't have fullbacks. So when you've got these on comeback on defense, they will help to form a back five and bed in with the back line when you don't have the ball. Chance creation is staying inside to get these guys on the touchline. They're going to create that width. And then the support runs for both of them are getting behind. Do a really good job, particularly Denzel Dumfries on this right-hand side of penetrating in behind the back line. Huge, huge part of their game as well. As I was mentioned, they like to kind of construct a lot of those attacking patterns in the wide areas. Finally, the support and crosses for both of them is getting to the box for the cross. And again, that's a huge part of these wing backs and how kind of fit they do need to be. With Brozovic in defensive midfield, a huge part of this team as well, and part of their kind of, I guess, form regression in recent weeks has probably been because of the fact that he's not been in the team. He's a huge part of this team. His defensive behaviour is cut passing lanes. They do instigate a kind of a lane press. And then attacking support is stay back whilst attacking. He's going to protect those two ahead of him because he's the deep line playmaker of this team. As we can see here, position freedom is on DLP and that is hugely, hugely important. He's the one who's going to progress the ball out from the defence should the centre-backs not kind of bring the ball out. And he really does keep it ticking over. Finally, his defensive position is cover centre. Now, with the two central midfielders here, we've got a couple of um, kind of different instructions. Starting off with Mikatarian, we've got him on stay back whilst attacking, and it's the same with Barella as well. The reason why we've done this is because you don't want them making runs in beyond the strikers. You really want them support in crossing situations. You want their positioning to be a little bit further forward if possible. But you want to make sure they're not making those runs in behind because they don't do that. They like to hold back and they dictate the play from the deeper areas. So with the support and crosses for Barella, it's getting to the box with the cross. With Mikatarian, it's just balanced. Him or Chalanolu, who have often rotated between those two positions, really kind of are dictated by whether the fact Barella's in the box or not. If he isn't in the box, then they will join and get into the box with crosses. Finally, with positioning freedom, for Mikatarian on the left central midfielder role, he's on stick to position and his defensive position is cover wing. With Barella, however, it's a little bit different. Still on cover wing, but this time his positioning freedom is drift wide. I notice he does like to do a lot of his work in the half channels and in the wide areas more, and he'll drift out into the wide areas a whole lot more than what Mikatarin or Chalanolu do. And it's definitely just the, the way that he likes to work, really, for more anything. It's something he did under Conti as well. And this has kind of continued under Simone and Zaghi. Now, with the two strikers, gone with Dzeko in this case, but the role does stay the same, whether it's Dzeko or Lukaku, so do bear that in mind. Support runs is stay central. Really only gets dragged out wide when he has the ball, if he needs to, and wants to get into some space. Otherwise, he will stay in the central areas. And his attacking runs is naturally a target man. He'll look to hold up the ball. And compliments Lautaro Martinez really well in that regard. His defensive support, finally, is stay forward. Now, with Martinez, on the other hand, a little bit different. His support runs are drift wide this time. He'll look to support those wing backs in the half channels particularly more. Uh, and then he'll pair that in with getting behind on his attacking runs as well as he looks to utilise that clever movement. Not so much blistering pace, but really intelligent movement. And finally, his defensive support is basic defensive support. So we spoke about how there is an attacking game plan. Let me take that through you now. I really noticed they do this when towards the end of games when they're trying to push for a goal, kind of like 70 minute onwards, they start making substitutions. 
and that's really when things really kick into another gear so defensive style changes to constant pressure this time it becomes a more relentless press again make sure we're only really using this if possible towards the end of the game if you are pushing for a goal the whip stretches out a little bit you generally just find they become kind of more expansive on both sides of the ball so the whip is on 40 and then the depth goes up to 70 this time giving you a high line with the offensive whip it goes up to 100 this time so all the way really stretching the player making sure they're exploiting as much space as humanly possible you will find gaps will be left on the counter-attack in defensive transitions for the opposition um so obviously that's just a kind of give and take something that you will have to kind of take that risk um, and then we play this in the box, this goes up to 9 as well. So you've got just a whole boatload of players getting into the box. Kept for corners, free kicks on 4. But if you really are pushing towards the end of the game, you can then move this up to 5. Now with player instructions, there are a couple of tweaks. First things first, it's important that both strikers this time are on stay forward. Remember last time Martinez was on basic defensive support. This time both of these guys do stay forward. And then there's a couple of changes as well uh, to the central midfielders. This time, Barella's attacking support is on balance attack. He looks to make more runs in behind um, and then beyond the strikers. And then with Mkhitaryan, he's also on balance attacking runs this time. And his support and crosses is getting to the box. Remember, on balanced, he was only on balanced crossing runs. This time, he's relentlessly getting into the box. And that does play into the players in the box tactic as well. So with that being said, we're just about ready to round it off there. If you've got any questions about the system, don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below. I'll do my best to get back to you, try to respond to as many comments, if not all comments, if possible. Um, and so if you do have a question, do let me know in the comment section. If you want to see how this system ranks and rates compared to all of the other tactics that we cover on the channel, again, make sure to check out the Patreon down below so you can get access to my FIFA 23 tactics package and a lot of other perks including exclusive tactics videos as well don't forget to check out my video games podcast the links will be in the description and in the top of the comment section great way to get your video games fixed if that's what you're looking for i think you guys will really enjoy that hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications every time i upload and give me a follow on twitter the link is down below with that being said we're going to go into some gameplay of the tactic now so until the next one thanks so much for watching and i'll see you soon